In our last video, we constructed a form of body armor supposedly worn by the armies of Alexander the Great. In contrast with other common metal armors of the era, this armor was constructed by layers of linen glued together by animal fat, providing a much lighter and less restrictive protection. In this video, we're putting to the test and throwing every weapon we've made at it and see how well it actually holds up against them, and then testing the limits of this technology to see how this type of armor would stand up against the modern weaponry. But first, a message from today's sponsor. <gasps> oh no, Andy, our Cove Split Bluetooth 2-in-1 water-resistant speaker system. This paired set of super portable Bluetooth speakers offer 360 degree surrounding stereo, ensuring optimal sound for your environment. Connect it with your smartphone, tablet, or computer using Bluetooth 4.2, then sit back and enjoy. Its powerful subwoofer delivers superior sound quality, and it can operate for up to seven hours on a single battery charge, and have a 32 foot working range. It also has a water resistant rating of IPX7. Separated, they offer left and right stereo sound, or combined, can offer 360 degree surround sound effect. So check out the Cove Split Bluetooth Stereo Speaker System now, using our discount code HDME65, and get 65% off. First up, let's assemble all the weapons we have. Then to test it, we have the linen thorax we made with 20 layers of linen. And then if we make it through that, Lauren put together an extra thick test square that's 100 layers thick. Lauren also found a brave volunteer to try out a little miniature Lionel Thorax and see how that would end up handling it in the end. All right, let's suit up and start testing this thing out. Oh, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> All right, so we have the Lino Lino. Lino. Is it Lino? Yeah. I was wrong? No. Lino. It's Lino. Lino. Yeah. Yeah. Lino. I'm second guessing everything. All right. The Lino Thorax we put together, and now it's time to actually put it to the test and see what it can resist. Basically, I'm going to throw everything we've made and battle test it. First, the axes. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do to you? He's wrong. I think it would have broken his uh, spine, but it didn't pierce. Wow. Does not pierce it at all, it bounces. Lots of force impact being absorbed, but no penetration. Next, some slashing with the Kopesh. Leave. Huh. Ooh, it's a gash. It's a gash. Went through quite a few layers. All the way? Not all the way. Yeah, it's like four layers to spare. Ooh. <laughs> Just thick enough. Let's try and smite him. Whoa. Holy sh Did you get him, Andy? <laughs> No, so we got a few layers there. Did the job. Bruised, but not beaten. Yeah, I think it protects him to do a good job. Definitely made some holes, but nothing, nothing went through. Still one piece, not a mark on him. Then some more traditional Bronze Age swords that were primarily used for thrusting. Ugh. We got anything. Lift up the skirt. Did it make it through? Yeah. Stab him twice. I think this is the first one. I definitely punctured. This one, I think, just bounced off. I believe they say it was mostly for protection against slashing and arrows. So actually standing up against a full thrust is a, a little bit beyond his expectations. And even metal doesn't hold up perfectly well against that. I think we're confirming a lot of beliefs about this. Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> I don't feel anything. <laughs> oh. 
Ooh. Did I get it? Huh? it <laughs> broke a hole, but it didn't go through the actual linen. Are you doing another one? Sure. <laughs> Hunter ones. Still didn't go through. It still didn't go through? No. That's crazy. I never punctured it, but it did put in enough pressure to like definitely crack some ribs. I think he, I think he felt that one. The hard surface of the mannequin potentially makes it easier to penetrate, so we also tried testing each over a soft archery target as well. Yeah. Nothing. I don't know. You wanna try it? I guess that's bronze for you. The main actual weapon of the Bronze Age is spear. So let's give that a shot now. Ooh. Oh, destroying all of our weapons. I'm gonna grab some duct tape. I don't know if this says the quality of the line of thorax or the lack of quality in my actual weapons. Put a little band-aid on this. Good as new. <laughs> oh yeah, that went through. <laughs> oh, that went deep. <laughs> yeah, spear does the job. Now some projectiles. First up, the Adelaidle. Yeah, still bounces right off. Let's try bow. Now the bundle bow and flat bow. And. Why? Let's try again. Ouch. I can't do it. Try the axle bow and arrow I made and hope it uh, doesn't blow up in my face. Put safety glasses on. Hope I won't lose an eye. It's not just me! <laughs> the arrow. <laughs> Ooh. That is. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Return to nature. I didn't go through. You good? Tell which hitch is which. He lives for now. Seems to bounce right off. My bow is a little underpowered. Later I'm going to find a more modern bow and see what it handles against that. But so far it's actually pretty good. <laughs> I think I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it's not just me. Doink. <laughs> Doink. Oh, that's much better. Really doinked it. <laughs> really doinked it. <laughs> oh boy. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh no. <laughs> My tree! <laughs> Let me get the hose. See, so do that with your Crocs. Testing a variety of different weapons and actually stood pretty good. Did find out it is flammable. So that is a way to take it out. Kind of a slow burn, basically a pig fat candle. I believe it was mostly for protection against slashing and arrows, and it stood up pretty well against that. But the one thing it didn't stand up against was actual uh, stabbing with a sword or spear. Pretty impressed. I don't know if it's up to par with actual metal armor, but it's definitely pretty good protection. Next, we're gonna kind of test it a little bit further with some more modern bows and take it to gun range and see, see if it's even bulletproof. So the, the two bows we made are a little bit lighter on the draw weight. See how well the linothorax stands against a modern bow and arrow. Oh. Clean all the way through into the chest. He's dead. Didn't stop a modern arrow. Next we'll try the 100 layer test square we did. See if that'll stop it. All right, looks like that stopped it. Made a decent way through, but Let's see if we can see how deep we got. Oh, that's really in there. Boy. How many is it? One, two, about well, 30 layers to stop it. I can't get it out. <laughs> there we go. So it's uh, less than halfway through. So let's up the ante and try some guns.
shooting isn't complicated. It's a matter of lining up the sights and then having a solid grip and a smooth press of the trigger every time. Okay. Yay! Bullseye. Yeah, nice clean target. Bullseye, dead center. I mean, if you shot a perfect one inch group right below that triangle, I'd be like, three potato holes. <laughs> You guys have the potential to become gunfighters right here. I'm not, I'm not kidding. And my name is Michael Nielsen with warfathertraining.com and I have a YouTube channel, Odin Warfather. So you guys reach out to me just because I'm a self-professed ballistics enthusiast and a professional firearms instructor. So we're gonna shoot a couple of different projectiles into it. First of all, we have a 22 long rifle, which is just a lead ball, nine millimeter full metal jacket which is target ammo. Then finally we have um, Federal HST, which is law enforcement or self-defense ammunition. It's designed to mushroom, so we'll see how they perform. All right, first we're gonna start with a 22 long rifle. We're at about a distance of 10 yards here. All right, let's go check it out. Look, the jugs- No jugs? The jugs didn't move. If we look, at the back of the armor, hey. there it is. The projectile was stopped. So nice job, guys. Hey. <laughs> Way to go. That's solid. That's totally impressive. Pig fat and linen. So next we have a CZ-75 9mm shooting just the full metal jacket target ammunition. <laughs> well, that is what did it. This is the back. Here's the bump from the 22 projectile. So it just went right through. Yep. Nice. So finally, we're gonna use uh, Glock 19 nine millimeter. I'm interested to see if it'll open up and penetrate or cause any kind of back face kind of like uh, deformation. Oh. The entrance looks, the hole looks the same, but the exit is quite different. And actually, look at this. Oh, wow. Saved some of the projectile here from the water. Is it hot? Um, no, it, it's, uh, the water cooled it off nicely, yeah. so. <laughs> Don't look, buddy. <laughs> I'm shooting, it's 62 grain, soft point, 223 hunting ammo, and this is just AR-15 rifle. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yep, so it works. <laughs> All right, let's go check out the target. It really kind of shredded up. So I think this was the entry. Yep, it is. Cause and then the it actually caused a lot of like uh, hydraulic shock, kind of like it blew it backwards yeah. when it exited. Okay, well hopefully our watermelon survives. We hardly knew ye watermelon. <laughs> hopefully his linothorax protects him. <laughs> I don't think you made it. <laughs> Anybody know first aid? I think I hit right in the center. His belt held up. Yeah. <laughs> Where are his eyes? <laughs> Kids, do not try this at home. Get the glue. I shot him exactly where you wanted me to, right above the belt in the center of his vest. I think you need more pig fat. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody mentions finding googly eyes, let me know. <laughs> Check, 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 check. Looks like uh, Alexander could only go out in a blaze of glory. So we put it to the test and found it was pretty effective against a lot of Bronze Age weaponry. And uh, while the linal thorax itself with only 20 layers wasn't the most effective against modern weapons, uh, the same concept applied to a little bit thicker with 100 layers was well, actually bulletproof. It was actually sufficient to stop modern arrows and even a 22, which puts it pretty comparable to uh, light Kevlar. However, because we use pig fat, it is flammable. Some people think he used some form of hide glue instead of actual fat, which uh, would probably be a little bit more effective and less flammable. But uh, what's the fun in that? Thanks for watching and thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.